Look, Dad made it home last night. All right, back to work on this planter here. I spent an hour or so this morning going over some stuff with Dad since he is back. We finalized a chemical order and uh, made sure my starter and all the fertilizer stuff that we need is correct. So uh, doing a little planning and green marketing stuff and trying to figure out what the right things to be doing are. Um, so I'm gonna go through and uh, check the gap on our opener blades on these back ones that were folded up when Brock did that yesterday. Uh, I lifted them up a little bit just to make them easier to work on so I don't have to crawl around underneath there. So now they're right here and I can get to them. So we'll go through and check all those. We'll check our gauge wheel clearances and contact and uh, and we'll be done with that part of it. I know I've shown you guys this, but I just wanted to talk about it a little bit more in depth here. So we're trying to check this contact area. This one's just under two inches. That's good. Two and a half, one and a half to two and a half is what we want. Um, some people would replace these blades just because the bevel is worn off of them and they are worn a little bit. And uh, a lot of people, when they're checking these, they'll spin them, you know, and check it in two or three or four different places around the blades. Some people will even try and slip them past each other. And, and it's a bean planter. I don't think it matters quite that much. Um, so I usually just check them in one spot because anytime I do, I mean, that's two inches. They're so close that I don't think it's that critical. Um, but everybody does their own way. It's a little different and I'm not saying my way is right. I'm just saying that apparently I don't care that much. But two inches, they're all usually pretty good, but you got to check them. If, uh, if you find one that there is not enough contact area where they're, they're kind of too far apart, um, what can happen is that instead of creating a nice seed trench here, um, you'll get kind of a W shape in the bottom of it where the blades don't quite come together right. And that's why we gotta make sure that we have enough contact. If you have too much contact area, it sort of flexes those blades and puts a lot of stress on them which can make the bearings go out faster. So we don't want that either. Openers and gauge wheels are adjusted. Another thing that I want to check here is these uh, closing wheels. So after the openers make the trench and drops the seed in underneath our, uh, through our seed tube underneath our Keaton firmer, then these wheels come in behind it and they just roll and they pinch the dirt back in on top and cover that seed up. There's a couple of bearings in here and so I just want to go through and spin them all, make sure that they roll, they're not rough, and that there's no play in the bearing shaft. I know I've got play up there. We're going to address that later. But as long as this one is tight, then that's good. There was one I found on the other end earlier that's going to need uh, bearing replaced. But I'm going to go through and check the rest of them here. So the ones on the back are all good, but here is the one that I found that's no good. So when I roll this side... Rolls real good, but watch this side. Stops quick, it's loud. And it wiggles. I don't know if you can see that wiggling, but it wiggles. So this one's gotta come apart. We gotta replace a bearing in there. So I'm gonna take this over to the bench to work on it, and it's gonna be a whole lot easier to just take the whole frame off and then work on the wheel. So we're just gonna take it apart right here. Bolt on each side. Okay, and then there is a spring. You can see this piece here goes into there. That's kind of the wear bushing, and boy, is there a lot of wear on that. We're gonna address that too, um, but all right, let me get this down. Okay, so I got that apart. Now there's a spring that's kind of to tension it that's still holding it together, so we gotta get that spring off of this hook in here. Okay, we've got this over here to our bench. Definitely got some wiggle to it. And uh, so we gotta get that off. We gotta get that nut off. I don't know if it's easier to take that nut off there or to pop this cap off and do the bolt from the inside. So I'm gonna pop the cap off and see what we got in there. Look at that, just a bolt. 
Okay. Okay, so we're gonna try and spin that off. These uh, cast iron closing wheels are quite heavy. When we get the corn planter up here, you will notice that the closing wheels on that planter are rubber and they are not cast iron like these ones are. Um, the difference is the kind of aggressiveness. Uh, obviously the cast iron weighs a lot more than the rubber. While the bean planter, we're typically planting into corn stalks. Either the re heavy residue that's been disked or potentially no-till or stuff that's been field cultivated but still a lot of residue there. And so we went with the cast iron closers to be a little bit more aggressive and uh, to work through some of that tougher ground conditions where the corn planter, everything has been disc ripped, field cultivated, it's nice, smooth, we've got lots of loose dirt and so we don't need nearly as aggressive of a closing system on that planter. So that's why cast iron on here. That's also why, as somebody asked me yesterday, the uh, seed disc openers are all nice and shiny steel and these are all rusted well that's steel versus cast iron the cast iron rusts just from the moisture in the air the steel not so much all right now that we've got this off we've got to get the bearings out and there are actually two bearings in there and there's a little snap ring that holds them in so i'm gonna get my snap ring pliers and get that out and then we'll see if we can't knock the bearings out from the other side we'll just punch them through Need a bigger hammer. There they go. All right, I gotta get some blocks to hold my wheel up. There. Now, this bearing, well, it spins a little bit now, but it's really tight. This one looks like it's already been replaced, to be honest. And it's not too bad. Phil, in his records, has written down all of the rows that he replaced bearings on. I'm going to go look and see if he already did this one, because if he did, we'll put that one back in. We might put that one back in anyway. Spring 2020, maintenance, 1790 planter. Checked all closing wheels, replaced bearings as needed. Row number four, left wheel, both bearings. Well, that's the one we're doing, but it's the other wheel. Notice this white spray paint drip here. That was his notation that that's the one that got done. So neither bearing in this wheel's gotten done. If we have them both, I'm just gonna replace them both. So, yeah, all right. Okay, well, it turns out I don't have those bearings. I thought for sure we would have them in the shelf, but uh, we don't. So I ordered those. Those are coming today with my gauge wheels. Uh, the no-till colders and other stuff are coming from another source. I've got to go run the pile of paperwork around and drop this off to somebody. And um, when I get back, I expect to have a UPS delivery and a uh, green mark John Deere delivery drop in our box out there and we can keep working on stuff. I'm back and look what came. We got some boxes. Yeah, I bet the UPS guy is not real happy with me today. There they are. 
So we got to get those put on. So as you might be able to tell from the side of the box there, I did not buy these colors from John Deere. I bought them from a aftermarket company and uh, they were about $5 a blade cheaper than buying them from Deere. There is more difference in them than I anticipated though. I thought they would be almost an identical replica. They are not. First thing that jumps out at me is the, the, the waves, the ripples in them are much shallower on these. Good or bad, I don't know. If I lay one of my used ones on top of here, they're still rippled where this one is worn to, so chances are I'm gonna replace them when they, they get worn similarly. So that shouldn't matter, although there'll be less ripple left. Um, I don't know. This one's made in Canada, this one's made in Spain. Does that matter? Not really. They're basically the same diameter, maybe a eighth of an inch difference. So I think that's okay. I don't know, they'll be fine. I just was expecting them to be rippled deeper than these are. I don't think it'll be a problem. It's what we got, so it's what we're putting on. If we wear these out in three years instead of five, we'll know, don't do it again. I did not think that gun had that kind of power. All right, now I need a bolt. Those colders go on pretty quick. I got the front row done. I'm gonna jump around and do the back row. We got some other pieces in there. We'll go over those in a minute. Thirty-two rows. I put thirty-two rows of those holders on. The one row that I decided to film is the one bolt that I broke. Last one. Last bolt. But I found another one. That'll work. All right, all the holders are on. Now I need to paint the rest of the tires or wheels, blades to make them match make them look good no nah, it's okay um but those are good we do still need to go through and adjust them though i'm not quite ready to do that yet but we probably are gonna have to move this up like i was saying the other day a notch because we do not want this to be deeper than this it's a little hard to see on that one with it folded up but on this one i think you can see the bottom of this blade is below the bottom of our seed openers and we don't want that. That'll make our uh, seed depth and trench completely screwed up, uneven, wavy, and uh, a problem. So we're gonna raise them up a notch so that they're above it and I'll do that by taking a quarter inch board, putting it down here on the floor. We'll loosen this bolt up and then we can set the planter down so that the opener's on the ground and then that will be on top of the board. We really only need to do one that way and figure out where exactly it needs to be set, whether it needs to go up one notch or two, and uh, then we can just make all the other ones match. Okay, I'm gonna go out and check and see if my John Deere parts came yet. I see tracks in the mud. That's a good sign. Haha, -ha, there we go. Got those um, gauge wheels, and I also got some bearings. These are the bearings for our closing wheels. They are not the same. These two bearings that came out of there and that go back in, they're, they're different. Uh, this one here is the inner bearing that goes down. This race is a little different on this side, shielded. Um, so that one goes in, and then this one here, this one's the same on both sides. Doesn't matter which way, but it goes in on top of it. We gotta get those pressed down in there and then put our snap ring back in, and then that one will be done.
Well, they're in. I just used this and a hammer, tapped them in there, and a snap ring. We'll clean it up a little bit, it's all greasy. Okay, now, before we put this back together, we got some work to do to this frame. So we're gonna have to take the other one off. I'll do that in a minute. And I wanted to show you guys this stuff. So there is a company, this RK, it's the same company that makes those gauge wheel uh, mounts or that system on there with the shims that we use. They make a kit to fix, man, this is hard with one hand. They make a kit to fix uh, these sloppy closing wheel frames. I'm gonna get it, got it. So that's what's in these bags. That's a lot of little parts. And we're gonna need those. Come on, there we go, directions. So, basically the way that this works is instead of those closing wheels just pivoting on that bushing in there, let me show you. So we are working with this joint right here. And right now it's a bolt with this bushing and then that and it just pivots on there and they slide. And you saw on those other ones that we took off this morning how much those bushings wear. Well, this kit eliminates that bushing and fixes this. So what it does, is it puts a couple of bearings in there. And then we've got some bolts to replace the ones that are there. Looks like we're gonna reuse the nuts. We've got some shims and spacers to get everything right. But these are to hold the bearing. Wow, those are loose. I'm surprised that they're that loose. Uh, but these are to hold the bearing in place on uh, the closing wheel frame. So what we need to do is take these on our frame here we need to line them up with those holes and weld them in place, which is the tricky part, welding them in the right spot. So I'm gonna get good at welding here and we're gonna figure that out. So I'm gonna read the directions, see exactly how it says to center these and place them because these holes are worn, so they're a little bit egg-shaped and not perfect with these, but um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do one and then I'm gonna show you how to do it because that way I'm not showing you on the first one when I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm learning from what I did yesterday. All right, we're gonna take another one of these apart. I've had my chance to practice and I'm not any better at it, but at least I know how to do it. So it's easier to take these wheels off before we take them off the planter. Or I should say it's easier to take the uh, frame off without the wheels on it. So we'll pop this cap. should be able to spin it right off. Once we have both wheels off, we can take these bolts out. comes off and there's this spring under here that's hooked. We just take that off. Let me go clean this part up. One thing that I am finding is that this hole where that uh, chain or spring hooks on there is quite worn. Like to the point where I don't know if we need to do something about that or not. Um, could try and weld it and drill it. That will be a giant pain in the butt on 32 of them. I don't know how much this piece costs. It's, it's just this bottom part. It bolts on right there, it appears. Yeah, so I might look at that, but yeah, them are worn. Once we've got this off, I'm bringing it over here to our welding table and I'm cleaning up these surfaces with the wire wheel. Then, we get our bearing race, and it fits on there, and I am clamping it into position. There's one of my clamps, where'd my other one go? 
So I'm putting this one on the front and then just kind of trying to feel it, get the top and the bottom lined up and it says to line it up with the front edge which would be this side so I'm trying to make that smooth. Once I get the top and bottom pretty close, put this clamp on the back side and then I can kind of get it exactly where I want it. And then we weld it in place. Kind of like that. <sighs> I think there's something wrong with the welder. Probably it's operator. But I had dad in here trying to figure out why it wasn't seemed to be working right and he didn't know any better than I did. So it's welded on there, but it's not pretty. And I don't, I don't know. I've got everything adjusted the way that it says to adjust it. I looked up the specs or the speed and the voltage and I, I don't I don't know what I'm doing. Well, it sounded better at the end. Don't understand. Well, I can stick well better than that. Boom. Anyway, after you get them welded on there, then I am taking them over here and hanging them up and painting them. I'm also numbering them, make sure they go back in the same place. I should probably let that cool. I let the other ones cool. I didn't let that one cool. We'll come back to this. All right, well, I've got three done of the eight kits that I ordered so we're gonna do four on each side which means two in the front two in the back two in the front two in the back um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the rest tomorrow I'm gonna let that one cool down so I can paint it tonight but it's 430 I'm gonna go in the office and start working on some uh, prescription maps hey Brock when you get here first thing to do take the trash out thanks all right, well, uh, I haven't gotten any real prescription maps yet. I did make one, but I, uh, I'm kind of switching from using Apex, John Deere's old desktop software, to the My John Deere Operations Center, which has been out for quite a long time, but I've 
felt lacking some functionality, um, but they've made it better. Uh, I still have to learn how to use it really well and teach myself. And so I'm going through like this field here. This is just behind our home farm. We're right in that office right there. Um, but it's got, it's got extra lines, right? So these two lines right here, I don't need those. I just want the ones that go around the perimeter. And so I can go and click on them and, uh, and get rid of them so that um, they're not, you know, cluttering up the displays, I guess, and just kind of cleaning stuff up. I'll keep doing that later. But it does have this pretty cool crop planner thing here, so we can kind of put in what fields are going to what crops, and it tells me what percentage of everything is, and then I can see it on a map and what all the different colors are. Whoa, 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 whoa where all the different fields are and the different colors represent different crops and stuff like that. So that's kind of cool. Um, uh, we're going to go through them one at a time and make up our um, prescription maps here, but this is a long-term project. It's going to take me quite a while. All right. I think this thing has cooled down enough that I can paint it, and then I'm going home. I'm even painting the whole thing so it'll look real nice on the back of the planter. Okay, there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. I, uh, I will be back tomorrow. We're going to keep working on this. Brock will be here tomorrow. And uh, I don't know. We're not going to get it done, but hopefully we can get these closing wheels finished up, put back together, and get the gauge wheels changed out. Those would be big accomplishments for tomorrow. So uh, I've got one of my chemical salesmen coming in the morning. I'm going to get stuff order placed with him and uh, get that stuff wrapped up too. So Anyway, questions, comments, leave them down below, and uh, hit that like and subscribe button for me, please. See you guys tomorrow.